time in. Good afternoon. If you would be so kind as to dismount your horse. The White Cloaks are a very interesting force in episode two. We see that men have power in our world and are a threat um, actually to the Aes Sedai and our other characters. But you also see that people can have this really firm belief that what they're doing is right. The White Cloaks, who are sort of like a religious cult who believe that they're following the light while indulging in torture and all the most extreme forms of violence. It's a very creepy combination, I think. Our costume designer, Isis Musandin, she's incredible because she's here to do something that feels really inspired by all the different cultures that exist in the book. How do you not fall into medieval when you have swords, horses, and capes? An incredibly difficult problem for me. So it's bringing some contemporary up, some fashion, some historic silhouettes. Mash it all together, <laughs> and you got the white clothes. It's good to remember Manethrin. It's just a song. No idea who Manethrin is, anyway. The story of Manethrin is one of the iconic moments that a lot of people cite as the moment that they fell in love with the books. Everyone said, you can't have someone tell a story on horseback for five minutes in an episode of television. But it was something I felt was necessary when we tested the first few episodes. The story of Minethrin was something that tested hugely well for us and sort of put everyone's questions about whether it should be in the show to bed. Heading into episode two, we have this other kind of creature in the world called a Fade. Who's a very mysterious, very scary creature who has supporters, people who worship him, very much like a satanic figure. The Fades are not easy for Aes Sedai to kill because they're able to move in and out of shadows, they're able to move very quickly, that they could be something that's very hard to channel against and that it's very good to have a warder around who can fight them hand to hand. We are at the exterior of Shadar Lagar, and that blue screen represents what will be a hundred foot wall that uh, surrounds the whole set. So Shadar Lagoth is one of my favorite sequences in the series. We actually built a whole city from scratch to do really 15 minutes just in episode two. It's really world building. It makes you come to understand that this world is bigger and has a deeper history than you might have thought otherwise. There are dark and light forces all around us and they all have different agendas, different histories. It's the idea of these places where the dark force has taken over, the sense that we are all prey to the force of evil. The darkness is everywhere and this force of dark is palpable. You know, it's something that can actually get on your skin. Night falls in Shadalugos and the shadows come out and they start chasing our heroes out the city. And this is how they get split up. Episode two is very much about such a huge moment in the books. We have gone from being sort of like a singular journey show where all of our characters are moving together to all of our characters moving in different directions as we move into the rest of the season. Hello. I don't care about the show. I just want a good blooper reel. I want to learn <laughs> science. <laughs> you guys are going to make me look like I'm in the show, right? You're going to put in the effects. Replace the green. I don't want to look like an asshole here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>